Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Maitra. Really excited to be here. Uh, I'm a research scientist at Google Brain and a PhD candidate at Cornell. And today I'd like to talk a little about artificial and human intelligence in, in healthcare. So we're really at an unprecedented point in time, uh, both in AI and healthcare. Let's talk about AI and machine learning first. In the past five to six years, primarily thanks to uh, breakthroughs in the development of deep neural networks, we've seen huge advances in computer vision, in, uh, in progress in, in natural language, uh, so in machine translation and question answering and dialogue as we just saw, in developing learning agents that can learn from scratch to superhuman performance, uh, beating world champions in Go and as of yesterday, StarCraft. Similarly, in healthcare, we're also in a very unique time. We're seeing an explosion of digital healthcare data become available to us. A lot of this is due to the increased adoption of electronic health records, which are becoming increasingly more accessible thanks to efforts like uh, um, FHIR. But aside from that, there's just also a general increase of other kinds of biological data sets. Uh, one example is given with genomics data, uh, where genome sequencing has become increasingly uh, cheaper through the years. Uh, it's maybe around $1,000 to sequence your genome now. And there already exist open source data sets, such as the Cancer Genome Atlas, uh, which looks at tracing the genetic roots of different kinds of cancers. Another place we've seen a huge amount of data uh, become available is in medical imaging. So this is from radiology to pathology to dermatology. So over here I have a picture of two x-rays from a very new chest x-ray data set. Uh, it was released four days ago and has more than 200,000 x-rays which are all labeled with lots of different kinds of diseases. And I think more generally, we're internationally seeing an effort to, to more and more uh, digitize and meticulously record all aspects of a patient's health data. So one other example I wanted to give is the UK Biobank that's already out there now, which is a longitudinal study on a cohort of more than 500,000 patients. It's been happening for several years and will continue to go on for, for several more. So these breakthroughs in techniques in AI and this increasing availability of digital healthcare data has of course inspired a lot of attempts to apply AI to healthcare. There's a great recent uh, review article by Eric Topol in um, Nature Medicine where he overviews some of these approaches. Um, so he overviews sort of 27 different AI for medical imaging papers uh, that are in all different kinds of applications. I do want to emphasize that we're in early days still. So out of the uh, 27 papers that he sort of mentions, um, there are actually only four that are currently in prospective trials. And you know, there are good reasons for this. We're still developing the correct ML models, the methodology, and most importantly, we're still working out the right problems to tackle for, with AI in healthcare. We can get some indication of the kinds of problems we should be thinking about by looking at some of the applications that have progressed the most. And again, there's a, there's a huge diversity of these. So for example, there's one, one application that's currently in prospective trials is using AI to help with diagnosis and colonoscopies, uh, another one for, for breast cancer, and, and another one for predicting heart disease. Actually, all of these have something in common. And the thing they have in common is that all of these are in fact assistive technologies. So despite being AI applications, these applications are meant to be used by humans, human experts, and these human experts are an integral part of this, of this system. And so while we've seen increasing amounts of research on, on AI with health data, uh, there are a lot of open questions on how these AI systems are going to interact with human experts. And, and in particular, we can also turn the question on its head and ask whether this presence of human experts in this, in this system is also going to give rise to new predictive problems that we can apply AI to. And 
So one widespread problem, which, uh, which is sort of amenable to AI approaches, is that of doctor disagreements. So doctor disagreements refers to this problem of suppose you have a patient and there's this associated patient data. Well, often what you'll see is that two doctors looking at this patient's information will come up with very different uh, follow-up conclusions or diagnosis. This is actually very well understood in the clinical literature. So just giving some examples, here's a, there's a recent paper that came out with the Mayo Clinic um, where they looked at referral and final diagnoses in a cohort of 280 patients. They found that only in 12% of the cases was there exact agreement. And more concerningly, in 21% of the cases, there was significant disagreement. Perhaps unsurprisingly, this latter group of patients also turned out to be the most costly to treat. Another example uh, looked at agreement in uh, interpreting breast biopsy specimens. And, and so here they studied around 7,000 different individual case diagnoses and found a 25% disagreement rate between the pathologists and the consensus grade. There are two main points I'd like us to take away from these examples. The first is, especially for us untrained in medicine, diagnosis is not easy. So to the untrained eye, here are, here are two x-rays. And to the untrained eye, we'd say that these actually have a lot of similarities to each other. But in fact, one of these patients has atelectasis, which can be a pretty mild disease, might not require that much treatment or medication, uh, whereas uh, this other patient actually has lung cancer. And this little arrow here is actually pointing to a small tumor that's been picked up by the, by the chest x-ray. The second thing to bear in mind is that these doctor disagreements, they're not just random. They happen because some patient cases have genuinely more confusing features. So here's another example. These are two patients in our cohort, and we had multiple doctors for each patient go away and just vote on what they thought the diagnosis for each patient should be. And we can see that for patient two, uh, there was sort of total agreement on what the diagnosis should be, whereas with patient one, there was much more confusion. Now, the nice thing about this problem is that suppose the patient data is really giving us information on, on what's going to cause disagreement. Well, that's something we can actually apply machine learning to. So we'd like to train machine learning models to identify patient cases that might give rise to higher doctor disagreements. And this sort of translates to trying to predict an uncertainty score for each patient case. And there are lots of use cases for this. If suppose we had this uncertainty score, uh, patients with high uncertainty scores could automatically be flagged to get a second human expert opinion. The main application we look at this in is with fundus photographs and diabetic retinopathy. This is a fundus photograph. It's a photograph of the back of your eye and can be used to diagnose you uh, with many different kinds of eye diseases. Uh, one of these eye diseases is diabetic retinopathy, uh, which despite being treatable if caught early enough, it remains a leading cause of blindness. Diabetic retinopathy, or DR, is graded on a five-class scale, and there's an important threshold at grade three. So grades one and two are non-referable DR, grades three to five are referable DR, and clinically, we absolutely do not want to confuse a referable DR patient with a non-referable DR patient. So we have this data set of uh, fundus photographs. And so, so each data point sort of is XI and consists of this image. And each data, set has, uh, each data point has multiple labels where multiple individual doctors have looked at this image and graded it separately. And this data set has features that are common to many, many medical imaging data sets. Uh, firstly, medical imaging tends to be quite big, uh, but uh, the images tend to be quite big, but uh, you don't have nearly as many images as with natural images, uh, and they also tend to be quite noisy, so you see quite a lot of disagreement between the labels. And so what we do with this data set is we train a uh, machine learning model, a deep neural network, to map each image to an uncertainty score between 0 or 1 uh, that should reflect the disagreement that we see in the labels. There's some slight methodological subtleties that I'll just mention very quickly. Um, so you can see that we do this direct process, direct uncertainty prediction. And another option is to first train a classifier and sort of post-process this output to get an uncertainty score. 
Here's a little schematic. You can do this two-step process, or you can predict stuff directly. Um, and for doctor disagreements, it turns out that there is this, these subtle reasons why you actually want to do this direct prediction instead, which is to do with the fact that doctors see more information than just the image when performing, when performing their, their diagnosis. So we can actually formalize this. We can state a theorem telling us that actually we really do want to do this direct prediction because that will give you an unbiased estimate. Um, and importantly, then we can look at the, the evaluation. So we evaluate all of our models on a small gold standard evaluation data set called the adjudicated data set. And this data set has uh, some very, a very nice property, which is that besides the many individual grades that, of, of doctors who have looked at this image and tried to diagnose it, there's also a consensus score where multiple experts have come together, discussed what the diagnosis should be, and come to an agreement on that grade. And the presence of this consensus score uh, lets us ask a, a really important medical question, which is, can we use our model predicted uncertainty scores to identify cases where an average doctor diagnosis will disagree with the best possible doctor diagnosis? And uh, it turns out you can. Um, so, we can train these, so we can train these models on this sort of noisy training data, evaluate on this gold standard test data, uh, and we see that these uncertainty scores do indeed correspond to disagreement between an average score and the best possible score. Also alluding to some of the subtleties of the implementation, we also see that this direct prediction styled models perform better um, than these sort of classifying and then predicting uncertainty. Finally, I'd just like to touch on the fact that um, in practice, uh, ranking cases is also very useful in a medical context. And so we did an additional evaluation where we were looking at these predicted uncertainty scores as a way to rank patient cases from easiest to hardest. And this is also something that uh, turned out well. So in summary, uh, I'd like to highlight that tackling AI problems and thinking about uh, uh, applications of AI systems that also account for the human expert in the loop in healthcare is going to be a very valuable thing to think about. And I also outlined sort of one, one kind of example that we'd looked at here, which is using direct uncertainty prediction models to, to tackle this widespread problem of doctor disagreements. Uh, so we have a paper online and also like to thank all of my co-authors and happy to take questions.